Hello and welcome to the latest edition of How To K2. Today we're going to talk about how to integrate a smart object into one of your processes. Now there are many ways to integrate a smart object into a process such as to save data to the smart object, to update data already existing, to get data, so return data back to the process for use in such things as line rules. So for example if my back-end data holds the necessary information that K2 needs to make a decision on which branch to take, I can then use a smart object to obtain that information. The other thing you can use it for is destination rules. I know there are many other things you may be able to use it for, but those are the primary ones, and today I'm going to show you how to save data out to a smart object inside of one of your processes. So let's get started. Integrating a smart object into your process is as simple as dragging the smart object event wizard onto one of your activities. This in turn will launch the smart object event wizard that will walk you through the necessary steps in the process. The first screen asks us for an event name. In this case, we'll use create change record. This is going to be actually writing out the information to our smart box that will keep track of our various changes in the process. Next, we use the, the context browser to find our smart object and the particular method that we want to use at this step. In this case, it's create, since it will be the first time that will be created. Select add, and we click next to move on in the process. At this stage, we need to map the various inputs that will populate the smart object data. In our case, we're using the info path form. So let's find a field here that's required, RFC number, and we will map that to the RFC number that is coming from the InfoPath form. We find the XML fields, the process, and the particular form we're using, and I know it's in request details, and there we go, request number. Select Add, and OK. So skipping ahead a little bit, we will see that all of them are now mapped. Each one of these inputs is mapped to a field in the InfoPath form that will populate it. Select Next. And if this particular smart object was returning values, I could also map those return values to K2 data fields or fields in the InfoPath form itself. Well, that'll do it for today. Join us next time when we'll be talking about the Smart Object API. Thank you. Have a great day.